Today's video is brought to you by Paldatech Backstage. I have been shooting non-stop with the Fujifilm X-H2S camera, alternating between stills and video. But I've discovered three things that I want to ask Fujifilm to fix, and I'm going to do that right now. Hi everyone, welcome to Pal to Tech. The Fujifilm X-H2S is an amazing hybrid stills and video camera. And frankly, ergonomics aside, I find it to be much better than the X-T4 in almost every way. The design and the handling of this camera is incredibly well thought out. However, there are some issues that I have run into that frankly, I'm sure others have experienced as well. Now, I'm not asking for anything fancy here, and I do believe that these issues could be fixed in a firmware update. I have three of them, so let's start with number one, and that is the ISO settings button. In order to change your ISO on the X-H2, or the X-H2S, you need to do two things. First, press in the ISO button. Then either rotate the rear command dial or use the D-pad buttons to scroll through the ISO values. On other Fujifilm X-T cameras that don't have the ISO button, such as the X-T3 or the X-T4, you can either use the dedicated ISO dial or you could put the dial into C mode and then use either the front or the rear command dial to set the ISO. There are two reasons that this became an issue for me. First, previously changing ISO on on the other XT cameras originally require just one step, right? You rotate this to the ISO that you want and you're done. But now it requires two steps. First, you have to press the ISO button. Then you have to rotate the command dial until you choose the ISO you want. And you don't have the option to even use the front command dial if you wanted to, if you found that that's ergonomically better. You have to use the rear command dial. There's no way that you can program ISO into the dials using this menu setting. So what used to be a single step is now two steps. And the second issue is even more significant for what I do. And that is when I have the camera mounted to an overhead rig. When I have it mounted on the overhead rig, it's more difficult for me to reach around when it's mounted on top of a rig to find the ISO button, press the ISO button, and then rotate the rear command dial. It's much easier on an XT camera when I know I can just quickly rotate the rear command dial and not have to fumble for which button it is at the top. Now, if you're having this issue as well, there is a small workaround. It's not great, but it's better than nothing. What you want to do is press and hold down DISP back button until you see the menu change appear. Then use the D-pad button and scroll through the options. And I would choose either the top D-pad button or the bottom D-pad button. Once you've done that, go ahead and set it to ISO. Now, when you're out shooting and you need to change your ISO, simply press the applicable button that you've assigned. So watch, I'll try this method changing the ISO now. I just press the top DISP button, boom. And then I can continue going and select the ISO value that I want and hit OK. You're basically now using one area with kind of one and a half steps to control the ISO instead of going button, flip, and then rotate with command dial. It's not great, but it's better than nothing. Next, let's talk about the autofocus mode selector switch on the front of the camera. On the X-T4, for example, I can rotate this switch to quickly put the camera into manual, continuous, or single autofocus. So now, on the X-H2 and X-H2S, there is a button instead. You press the button, and then you need to either rotate the rear command dial or use the D-pad buttons to choose your focus mode. Again, that is a two-step process where previously there only used to be a one step. You know, rotate button, doom, you're done. Now, while I have gotten used to that, although I still prefer the focus mode switch, one firmware update improvement that I really hope Fujifilm makes is to allow the user to change the autofocus modes while you're shooting. Let's say I'm using an X-T4 and I have my focus mode switch set to C for continuous. And I go ahead and I start shooting video. So so I'm now shooting video and I'm in continuous autofocus. If while I'm shooting without having to stop the camera, if I want to quickly switch it to manual focus and take control over the camera, I can do that using the focus mode switch. Here I am in continuous mode. I'm going to go ahead and switch the focus mode now to M without stopping the shooting. Here we go. Boom. I just switched to manual mode. See, I'm now in manual mode. And that can be really handy when wanting to switch from single to continuous to manual while you're shooting without having to stop shooting and then 
change it, and then start shooting again. Now let's try the same situation on the X-H2S. I'm gonna go ahead and put my focus mode into AFC, and I'm gonna start shooting. Okay, I'm now shooting in AFC, and the camera is doing exactly what it should be doing. However, I now decide that I wanna take over and manually control the focus. If I try and press the focus mode button while I'm shooting video, look at this, nothing's happening. I can press this thing all day and nothing will happen while I'm shooting video. I have to stop shooting video, then press the button, then make the change, and then start shooting again. Now, like my first example, there is a workaround you can do with this as well to get past this restriction. Go into your menu, into AFMF and make sure AF plus MF is turned on. I'm gonna go ahead and start shooting in continuous autofocus mode. You see how the camera is continuously autofocusing? Now, while the camera is still shooting, I'm gonna slightly rotate the focus ring on the lens. Just slightly, that's all I had to do. It's in manual focus mode, you see that? It's like the minute you slightly turn the focus ring, the camera senses that you're trying to manually focus and it disables continuous autofocus. And it keeps it disabled the entire entire time while you're shooting unless you half press down the shutter release button. Don't press it all the way or you'll stop filming, but half press down the shutter release and now it goes back to the regular continuous autofocus. This trick will also work on an X-T4 and an X-T3 as well, although with those cameras you can certainly use the focus switch if you want. But on the X-H2 and X-H2S, that is the only way I know of to take control over the focus mode of the camera while you are shooting. Okay, number three, let's talk about the joystick or as Fuji calls it, the focus lever. On the X-T4, you could double press the joystick. Click, click, and when you did so, the camera did two things at the same time. It went into focus point edit mode, right, where you could move around the focus point, and it repositioned the focus point right to the center of the screen, sort of like a reset. Again, it does two things. When you double click on it, it allows you to edit the focus point, and it recenters it in the center of the frame. But watch what happens on the X-H2S, when you try this. So my focus point is currently in the lower left area of the frame. I'm gonna go ahead and double tap the focus lever. Boom, boom. See, nothing happens. Look at that, nothing's happening. It just puts it into edit mode, that's all it does. Now if you go into your camera's settings in the wrench under button dial setting, focus lever setting, you do have the option to reset to center if you want to, but it doesn't allow you to edit the focus point. And that's the thing about it that's so odd. It's enabled in part of the X-T cameras, but they just sort of removed it from the X-H series. And the difference between that, that microsecond where you then have to move it or have to recenter it, you could lose a shot in that time. Again, this can't be that difficult to fix via a firmware update. And I do recommend that Fujifilm consider doing that and bringing these options back to the X-H2 and X-H2S cameras. Now, before I end today's video, we've got a backstage announcement to make. Well, it's certainly that time again. Time to welcome a brand new Gear Iguana Hall of Fame member, Michael Gua. Michael, thank you so much. I cannot tell you how much your support means to me. Now, without any further ado, let's get your name added to the Gear Iguana Hall of Fame. Well, Michael, there it is, right there, right on the studio wall, just a little bit out of frame, but it is part of the studio forevermore. And I want to again thank you for your support and congratulations on being our latest Gear Iguana member. As for the rest of you, if you have not yet checked out Pal Detect backstage, what are you waiting for? We start off the week every Monday morning with coffee time. Our private Patreon page gives you previews of upcoming videos before they're released, and we have our own private Discord server that you have complete access to. So be sure to check out Paldetech backstage, and now, back to the show. Because in the end, the X-H2 lineup are wonderful cameras. But I do think that addressing some of these issues, particularly with speeding up the ability to make those setting changes, will make these cameras even better to use and bring a little bit of that honeymoon period back. Now, before I go, I wanna clarify something. In addition to pal to tech Backstage, YouTube also offers you the option to join the pal to tech channel as what's called a channel member. Meaning that when you click the Join button and automatically 
automatically start supporting the channel, you also automatically become a member of the Backstage Private Discord server. Discord is an online community where channel members, photographers, filmmakers, and so forth can connect with one another. It's sort of like Facebook, where you know you can post photos, share ideas, but it's a lot better than Facebook. It's a great place to get ideas, ask questions, and learn more about all different types of photography and filmmaking topics. However, I noticed that we have a lot of channel members who haven't yet used this benefit. So, if that's you, I will have a link in the description down below where you can get more information on how to access this Discord server benefit. Anyhow, be sure to join us next week as rumor has it that there's gonna be some very exciting Fujifilm announcements headed out our way. And you can be sure that I will be bringing all of this information to you as quickly as possible. It should be interesting. Stay tuned. Well, thank you so much for watching and I really hope you found the video helpful or at least entertaining. And if you did, be sure to give it the like and subscribe. I will be signing off now, but have a wonderful weekend and I'll see you in a new video next week. Take care.